Excellent. Okay, so the last talk mm -hmm. in the session will be given by Naoki Kobayashi about validity checking for automated program verification. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. So uh, I'm Naoki Kobayashi. So uh, this talk is about automated method for checking the validity of formulas of high order fixed point logic called HFG. So why is that interesting? So that provides a uniform approach to automated verification of high order programs because various verification problems for high order programs can be naturally reduced to this problem of HFG validity checking. And this can be considered a generalization of other logic-based automated verification frameworks such as constraint home clauses. So constraint home clauses have been used as a common framework for automated verification of first order programs. And more recently, its high order extensions have also been studied, such as HOCHC and new HFZ. And plain CHCs can be directly used for verification of safety properties. And if we extend that with a combination of least and great fixed point operators, then we can also deal with arbitrary regular temporal properties, as we have shown in the work on new arithmetic. And HLZ, which is a target of uh, this study, is a sort of uh, a combination of two extensions. So HLZ is a high order logic that is suitable for encoding verification programs for high order programs. And it also provides uh, fixed point alternations that is suitable for encoding temporal properties. And we have implemented our method. And despite the generality, our tool actually outperformed uh, existing previous tools for automated verification of high order programs, specialized for each property. So here is an outline of the list of this talk. So first, let me introduce a high order fixed point logic. So HLZ comes from Viswanathan and Viswanathan's higher order modal fixed point logic called HFL. And we have added integer arithmetic and omitted uh, modal operators. So here is a syntax of formulas. So in addition to ordinary logical connectives, okay, we have uh, least and greatest fixed point formulas. Okay? And we also have lambda abstractions and applications to manipulate high order predicates. And we also have some primitives for integer arithmetic, okay? So here's an example of HFZ formula, okay? And for this, I sometimes use uh, this alternative notation based on fixed point equation, okay? So here to see what this formula means, uh, let us unfold the fixed point formula and get this one, okay? And then we can better reduce it to get this one, okay? And by repeating these steps, we get this kind of formula, which means that n is an even non-negative integer. So here is another example that uses the greatest fixed point operator, okay? So to see what this means, uh, so let us unfold fixed point formula, let us reduce it. And by repeating this, we get this. So this means that, uh, T holds for any non-negative integer x. So as you can see here, although the primitive syntax does not include quantifiers, we can actually encode quantifiers by using least and greatest fixed point operators. Okay. So now let me explain how this is connected to program verification. Okay. So let us consider this uh, some function which just computes the summation of integers from one to n. And here I use the contention passing style uh, to clarify the correspondence with uh, HFZ, okay? So suppose that we are interested in the termination property of this sum function, okay? Then that can be expressed by this HFZ formula, okay? So, <clears throat> So this formula is valid just if the sum function terminates for the argument M. And as you can see here, there is a cross correspondence between formulas 
and the original program. Okay. And to get the intuition why this captures the termination property, let us consider the special case where m equals 2. Okay. So then that is equivalent to this based on the fixed point equation. That is further equivalent to this and true. Okay. And this equivalence preserving transformations correspond to this reduction sequence of the original program. Okay. So from this, uh, you can see that why uh, so this is related to termination property. And suppose that we are interested in the total hopeless instead, where here the post condition is the, that the return value R should be no less than N. Okay. Then that is expressed by this formula, just obtained by replacing true with the post condition. So again, uh, so let us consider the special case where M equals two. Okay. So then this formula is equivalent to this. So that is true. And again, this sequence of equivalence preserving transformations directly corresponds to this reduction sequence of the original program, where the post condition is given as a continuation. Okay. And if we are interested in the partial correctness instead, we just need to replace the, this fixed point operator with the greatest one, new to interpret divergence as true, okay? So I don't give further details on the correspondence with, with uh, program verification, but basically we can encode arbitrary regular temporal properties of high order programs into the variety checking problem for HFZ, okay? So that means if we can construct an automated tool for HFZ variety checking, then we get automated to for higher order program verification for free. Okay. So that's uh, what I'm going to explain now. So, <clears throat> so here is uh, our method, uh, overview of our method for HFZ validity checking. Okay. So given a uh, HFZ formula phi, we first remove the least fixed point operators to get new HFZ formula which only consists of greatest fixed point operators. And the reason why we do that is that we have already auto automated tools for new HFD variety checking. Okay. And intuitively, the new HFD formula, which only contains greatest fixed point operators, correspond to safety properties of uh, programs. So this first step, uh, can be considered a generalization of a popular approach to liveness for termination verification that reduces termination verification to safety property verification. Okay. So anyway, so once we get a new HMT formula phi prime, then we can invoke an existing tool for new HFD validity checking. And if phi prime is valid, then we can conclude that the original formula is valid. And otherwise, we go back to the first phase to define the approximation, okay? And as you can see here, so this method can only conclude the validity of a given formula, not invalidity, okay? But uh, we can run the same procedure for the negation of the given formula in parallel, and then we can decide whether the given formula why it's valid or not, okay? And of course, unfortunately, the new HFZ variety checking problem itself is undecidable because we can encode various verification problems, okay? But at least uh, by this method, we get incomplete but sound and free automatic method. Okay, okay so, <clears throat> And since uh, we have already tools for this new HFZ validity checking, the focus of this work is this red part for approximating HFZ formula by new HFZ formulas and how to define the approximation. Okay? So that's what I'm going to explain now. So and the, actually the basic idea is quite simple. So based on the standard property on 
this fix point. The this fix point of the predicate phi can be under approximated by a finite number of applications of phi to the list element. Okay. And here, the number of times, uh, number of applications uh, is parameterized by uh, three integer variables available in the formula and some parameters C and D. Okay. And that can be actually expressed by using the great greatest fixed point operator. And the idea is just that we add an uh, extra parameter to count the number of remaining applications. Okay. And we initially set that to Cx plus D, and then we just decrement the counter each time phi is applied. Okay. And actually, we further transform that uh, to this formula of this form. The, this is just to help the underlying solvers. And actually, this uh, so in the context of termination verification, this approximation can be corresponds to the replacement of termination with bounded termination within a given uh, depth of recursion. And the important point is that if we define, uh, so if we increase the values of C and D, the precision of the approximation is monotonically uh, improved. Okay. So let me show you an example. So this formula uh, captures a termination of uh, this uh, some function. Okay. So since we are interested in the termination property, uh, the predicate, corresponding predicate sum is defined by the least fixed point operator. Okay. So by using this method, we can under approximate it with this greatest fixed point formula. Okay. And in this case, uh, it suffices to set C and D to one. And then we can automatically prove that the right hand side is valid. And then we can conclude that the, the original formula is valid. So that means uh, some, the, some function is terminating. Okay. So that's it. But uh, in order to deal with high order predicates, uh, we need a further twist. Okay. So let us consider this uh, example. Okay. So in this case, uh, the predicate E is defined by using the least fixed point operator, so that we we wish to remove that. Okay. But to do that, uh, we need to estimate how often uh, E should be unfolded. But of course, that depends on the value of the predicate P. Okay. But there is no integer parameter available to estimate that. So to address that issue, we just need to add an extra parameter x to uh, capture the information about the predicate p like this. Okay. So once we do that, we can apply the previous technique to remove the to replace the list with form operator mu with a new. Okay. But the new issue uh, arises here on how to find appropriate extra parameters. So this kind of uh, insertion of extra parameters often occur in the context of high order program verification. And in the, for example, in the Uno et al's work on a relatively complete refinement type system, they employed a rather complex SIGA procedure to guess uh, this kind of extra parameter, parameters. But we like to avoid that for the scalability. And the key observation to avoid that is uh, actually the, in our case, extra parameters are only used for estimating the number of uh, unfoldings. So that actually the larger values of extra parameters are better, always better. Okay. So that means we can actually fix the extra, extra parameters to expression for, of this form, just Cx plus D. 
So you can compare that with uh, this one in the previous slide. Okay. So in our case, uh, there is no heuristics is required to uh, ins insert extra parameters. So we can just use uh, fixed expressions. And then uh, we can apply the previous technique to uh, remove the, these fixed point operators. Okay, that's it. So in the actual uh, transformation described in the paper, we apply a further twist to avoid uh, insertion of redundant extra parameters. And to do that, uh, we introduced a type objective transformation to perform uh, this kind of transformation. And the detail is described in the paper. Okay, okay so now uh, let me briefly discuss the power of our verification method. So the key step of our method is this first step for approximation. But unfortunately, that part is necessarily incomplete because from Computational theoretic point of view, the HFZ validity checking problem is significantly harder than UHFZ validity checking. So we cannot hope for uh, any complete method. But actually, uh, we can prove that our method is at least more powerful than uh, other popular methods for uh, that videos. Liveness or termination verification to safety property verification. Okay. So the detail is uh, described in the paper. Okay. So we have implemented our method. So let me briefly uh, report experimental results. So we have compared our tool with four previous automated tools for higher the program verification each of which is specialized for termination, non-termination, fair termination, and fair non-termination. Okay. So here is the result. And as this, exam, uh, this graph shows, uh, actually, despite the generality of our tool, our tool almost always outperforms previous tools ex uh, with only a few exceptions. Okay. So that's the good news. And uh, let me also mention that our two, uh, because of the generality, our two can also deal with properties that could not be dealt with in previous tools. Okay. So uh, let me conclude. So we have proposed an automated method for HFZ validity checking, which serves as a common backend for automated high order program verification. And our approach can be considered a generalization of uh, popular uh, methods for reducing liveness or termination to safety property verification. And that it is easy to automate. And we have proved that it is theoretically more powerful than other popular approaches. And also experimentally, we have shown that it outperforms uh, previous tools. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for the very impressive talk. Um, questions? Okay, so perhaps I will start with a question. I don't know if you attended the first session of Popple this morning, but there was a presentation on MSL, so another logical extension ah, yeah. for higher order verification. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question is, how do these compare? Because they showed it's equivalent to yeah actually i will just run about that work this morning so i'm not sure yeah that's how very fair exactly. but perhaps you want yeah. to get in contact but at least we have already implemented too yes okay yes um so when you explain the basic uh, approach before the higher order predicates the number of unfoldings 
it was given by this expression c yeah, times yeah. number yeah. of occurrences of x1 and so on plus d but uh, so i was just wondering where this comes from uh, so c and d uh first set to some initial values uh, like one and then in the refinement phase, uh, we just increase those values, for example, by multiplying. By I see, but, but why uh, why have a function of the number of variables at all? Because you could just have C, right, just some constant number of unfoldings, which is then increased. Or maybe I'm missing uh, So something. the number of unfoldings should depend on the values. So for example, let me see. Maybe this one. So here, so the number of times some should be unfolded depend on the argument n. Oh, sorry. So, uh, yeah, so here, here's a bound. And so if, so here, the, our bound depends on n, okay? So if it is a constant, then we cannot prove that the right-hand side is valid. I see. Yeah, yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, thanks. Any further questions? That seems not to be the case, so let's thank the speaker again. Yes, thank you.